VST expression 2 includes two new components, including node expression and dynamics. So one of some of the traditional limitations of MIDI are many of the controller messages are channel based as opposed to being note based. Most of our compositions are based on notes and not channels. If we wanted to, for instance, have a drum part and make the snare drum do a crescendo, if, and I draw in main volume messages, control messages, it'll actually adjust the volume of every note on that channel. If I wanted to pan or apply pitch bend to individual notes, it would be global for the entire channel. Note expression gets over this traditional limitation and is now part of the VST 3.5 specification. So instruments that include and support this are Halion Sonic SE, which is included with Cubase 6, as well as the Halion Sonic 1.5 and other further instruments from Steinberg in the future will have this support. So if we wanted to listen to a traditional part, let's listen to a little brass part here. We can now come right here, we'll play. So if I wanted to double click, I would then launch into my key editor. And so if I wanted to make this last chord louder and do a crescendo, I could just draw in my controller messages and now we'll listen to it. And we'll see that it's gonna be applied to every note in the channel simultaneously. But I want it to perhaps be more expressive. So what we could do here is we could open up our note expression tab and we can select different parameters. So if I wanted to draw in volume messages, I can now just grab my pencil tool, double click on a note, and draw in a crescendo just on a particular note. And this will actually be indicated right here visually. So instead of seeing my controllers globally for the lane, I can now just have individual controllers apply to the particular note. If I wanted to come over here and look at panning, I could now just double click on notes. And we could also speed up the entry process by coming right over here, placing it to step entry mode. And let's say I want a static value for the particular note. And if I wanted to pan the chords, so the bottom note is all the way to the right, the center note is in the center, and the top note is on the left, I can now just grab my pencil tool and I'll draw in, hit my left arrow key, this will take me to the next note. And now I could just simply apply individual panning for every note in the chord. Now this is also helpful if I wanted to apply pitch bend information. So let's say I wanted to perhaps mimic an actual trumpet coming over here, I can now just draw in, if I select my pitch bend data, I'll select tuning, and now what I can do is come right over there and draw in my data. Now, I'm also going to have a little anchor points here, so if I wanted to change my starting point, or if I wanted to compress the data, or trim it, or kind of grab my ending, or I could also come right over here and compress or expand the controller information. So very, very easy to edit these tools. So let's take a part that I prepared already and we'll kind of just listen to the expressiveness that we can get from this one particular part. So we'll double click and here we can see our controller messages. So I'm gonna have a little lip bend right here, individual panning as well as a crescendo. So now I can listen to part. So instead of having to use multiple MIDI channels to have that control over the different voices, I can have multiple parts in one particular channel on one track and still have that level of control that I can't have with any other tool. Now, we could also use this functionality if I wanted to apply dynamics. So let's take a listen to the string part here. And this will be just kind of a straight string part. And let's listen to perhaps this last phrase coming up here. It's a very pretty musical piece. So this is without note expression data. We'll listen to the last chord especially. All right, now one of the things that we could do is apply note dynamics. So if I wanted to come here, I could actually have a dynamics lane. And as we wanted to just apply dynamics, like say I want that to be mezzo forte, I could use 
or a piano. And at this point, I wanted it to be mezzo piano. And I could apply different dynamics, which automatically translate. And I could choose the values by using the scroll wheel on my mouse. But let's take a listen to this part again, but with note expression data. So if I wanted to come here, let's listen to how much more expressive this will be. Or the individual chords. their own decrescendos within certain notes. So that way different notes could fade out at different times, creating much more musical results. Now one of the great things that was introduced in Cubase 5 was Very Audio. And Very Audio had an amazing feature for actually being able to extract MIDI information from a part. So if I wanted to come into my Very Audio tab, there's a function here that would allow you to extract MIDI. And we could just do notes and pitch bend data. But now we could actually translate this into note expression data. So what I've done is I've taken this saxophone part here and I've actually done one with just straight MIDI information and and then I've extracted also with the note expression data. So let's take a listen to our original saxophone lick. All right, so now I've extracted it without any of the note expression data, and we'll listen to the MIDI part here. So it doesn't really convey the, the subtle nuances and musicality of the original saxophone part. Now, let's listen to the part with the note expression data. So you get an idea how that information and musicality is carried over. And let's play both of those with the original part. We'll start with the no MIDI expression. We'll put that in now. And let's listen to now with the note expression data. So again, hear how much more accurately and how more musical the note expression data can deal with the MIDI part. Now, we can apply these same principles if I wanted to come over here for automation that we used and saw in our note expression editor. So let's say I have automation data. Now I could select my automation data. And now if I wanted to, we'll make this a little larger. I could now, if I wanted to trim the automation, so we have the same paradigm if I wanted to take the beginning and kind of adjust that or adjust the ending of an individual clip or just kind of expand or tighten the automation curve as well as for MIDI controller data. So if I wanted to draw in volume messages, I can now apply the same editing paradigm to my MIDI information. So if I wanted to make come here and I wanted to adjust my controller information in the same way. So as you can see, we can have not only a better editing paradigm for dealing with our controller and automation information, but we have much more expressive control over our MIDI with the note expression and great control with our dynamics with full integration into the scoring. So as you can see, note expression makes MIDI better.